Now, throughout my time on YouTube, it's become a rule of mine to stay as uninvolved in the situations I talk about as possible. Frequent viewers are probably fully aware as to why that is, but being a channel where my main goal is to cover the intriguing and usually fucked up portions of our fandom in my spare time, I hardly have the time to involve myself in the antics of whatever dog fucker or child toucher decides to try and justify their mental illness to me. Talking about it, bringing it to the attention of others, and using the situation as an example of a much larger issue is all I can really do as one guy on the internet. Although, chances are my disdain for animal fuckers only reached this point because of a field study I performed at the age of 19. I have alluded to this in a few of my past videos, but back in 2019, I would LARP as a questioning Fido fucker on Twitter, to see if the horde of zoophiles over there really were all about loving and taking care of animals on the same level as people. What I got from this was one animal sex meme after another, pseudo-intellectual rants about how people who hate animal fuckers or antis will never connect with and understand animals like zoophiles do, and who could forget the copious copious amounts of bestiality. I subjected myself to all of that, only to end up at the same conclusion I began with. Zoophiles don't give two shits about animals. They just want to fuck them. What I just described to you would rightfully be considered a gay op. For clarity's sake, a gay op is a plot where you plan to get close to an enemy in an effort to learn more about them and take them down. Now, gay ops aren't inherently a bad thing. But it should be noted that what separates a gay op from a usual failed plan is that gay ops have much more potential to viscerally blow up in your face. The means barely being able to justify the ends is what I believe truly defines a gay op. In my case, I didn't need to subject myself to the fucked thoughts of Fido molesters to clarify they were bad. But here I am telling you the story about it. The reason I'm even talking about gay ops here is because a friend of mine faced the repercussions of one just a few weeks ago. To say that its occurrence resulted in the most disappointing downward spiral to face the commentary furry scene would be one hell of an understatement. Of course, I'm referring to the YouTuber Coyote Lovely, a furry commentator who has frequently been featured on my channel. As on top of creating similar strands of content, the two of us have been friends for quite some time now. However, the latter has become less the case with each new piece of information resurfacing as a result of the aforementioned gay op. But regardless of our faltering friendship, I don't plan to sugarcoat this topic too heavily because of it. And due to our connection, there may be small interjections during my coverage, where I share my own thoughts and opinions in regards to the timeline of events I'll be sharing. Because of that, I would recommend using the videos linked in the description as accent pieces to my own. A fancy way of saying, check out the sources I use for this video. In this video, however, I'm going to run you through the day in which Coyote's reputation as a hunter and mocker of internet degenerates would be placed down under. A day in which we would hear his final dirge in the dark, as painful as it was to listen. But first, a little bit of backstory. On February 19th, a new Kiwi Farms thread would be created with Coyote Lovely as the topic detailing a somewhat concise timeline of Coyote's more deplorable actions on the internet up until now. It speaks on his relation to the pedozoozer Carlo, most info in this section being admittedly speculative, other than the two living together at one point before a house fire would have the two go their separate ways. It also talks of his association and defense of alt-free baby fur Blamir, at one point defending him in a dispute against the original Zoophile Struggle Tweets account. But the main point of issue would be covered in the section on Hypnotist Sappho, someone who hardly needs introduction anymore. Just search them up on YouTube and I'm sure you'll find a feature-length film documenting their dog-humping, child-grooming sins against humanity. This section, however, talks about the public feud Coyote had with Sappho, a conflict that started with a live stream and would result in three separate videos on Coyote's channel afterwards. However, it would be noticed that even with Sappho's march against Coyote, where she would threaten to firebomb him as well as threaten suicide because of him on separate occasions, the two still appeared to be in contact with one another, on both Discord and Telegram. Now, the reason for this was due to a plan Coyote had that was going on since the tail end of 2022. This plan consisted of buttering up to Sappho, getting close to her in hopes of getting personal information out of her the very definition of a gay op. The glaring issue of it being that getting close to Sappho consisted of flirting with her. Flirting with someone who has admitted to being both a dog and child fucker on multiple occasions. 
someone who has dated minors on multiple occasions in the past year. This op is believed to have gone on for about three months, from November 2022 to January 2023. It would be blown rather quickly when information concerning it would be mentioned on Kiwi Farms, this resulting in the three closest involved with the op, Coyote, Alex, and Pizza, to essentially fall into their own forms of damage control mode, Alex and Pizza arguing on the form itself about the op's legitimacy, while Coyote would go on to delete his side of DMs with Sappho before jumping ship. It all went south very quickly, as to be expected just based on the info gathering method of betting the enemy. However, the crash and burn of this operation was in mid to late January. The repercussions of this gay op wouldn't show themselves until the tail end of February, where the Kiwi Farms thread on Coyote would be posted. A thread that would catch the attention of content creator Cass Warfox. Curious about what had been shared in the thread, he would reach out to Coyote to schedule an interview, where the two of them would go through the thread on livestream to make sense of it all. The two would agree on it happening Saturday, February 25th. Leading up to the live discussion, Coyote would find himself in a number of back and forth slap fights on Twitter due to the existence of the thread, where people would either question his actions in the op or were just looking to get a jab in on him fetish wise. In my own server, a thread will be made to discuss the Kiwi Farms post, Coyote even taking the time to answer a number of questions my server members and I had before the stream, as he was a moderator for my server at the time. During this, he would give his side as to why he deleted the logs he had with Sappho. According to him, it was a panic move, choosing to do so because of the fact that Sappho could have used the logs between them out of context to ruin his reputation, which struck me as a bit odd. I mean, on Telegram, you could delete messages from both sides, which I guess would make sense, but on Discord, you can only delete your own side. That would be removing context that would leave Sappho able to fill in the blanks however she chose to. But regardless of the feeling, I wanted to have faith in my friend. Now, yes, that probably sounds stupid when what my friend did was flirt with a dog fucker responsible for kids cutting themselves in her name, but trust me, my reasoning for doing so is probably gonna sound stupider. A few months before this gay out came to light, I was in a bit of a dark place myself. A dark place I only have myself to blame for. After a few bouts of imposter syndrome and paranoia, I fucked over a number of friendships and became much more misanthropic due to my own rash decision making, and I was going to be damned if I were to do it again with Coyote. So I gave him a chance to plead his case, even to the point of running on pure copium as the stream drew near. Regardless, my mind was made up. As I only knew vaguely of the gay op, at least until a number of days before the stream, I'd wait for the dust to settle, waiting for his interview with Cass so I could make a decision based on how Coyote explains himself. Then things started to go sideways. About five hours before Cass' stream was set to begin, Coyote would announce that he wouldn't be able to attend the stream due to events in his personal life, that being his brother and his brother's wife coming to visit him. He offered to reschedule with Cass, but this was declined as the people involved had their own responsibilities to tend to and couldn't reschedule along with him. The show must go on, Cass said. In response, Coyote gave him a document containing evidence from his side of the story, telling people on Twitter to still watch the stream anyway and form their own conclusions. So as Coyote would be spending time with his brother and his brother's wife, Cass still planned to go on with the stream so that he could discuss Coyote's QE Farms thread. Though you might wonder, why was Cass treating it as if Coyote bailed on the interview? He said a scheduling conflict came up, so it would be understandable that he can't make it, right? Well, it was shortly after Coyote tweeted this announcement that he would be seen in another Discord server called The Senate, where he could be seen in a voice chat playing League of Legends. I should probably be the last person saying this given my track record, but Coyote, of all games, did it have to be League? Now, as bad as this looked, there was still about five hours before the stream was supposed to start. Surely things couldn't get any worse at this point, right? Even with Coyote's absence, the stream went on as scheduled. To say the anticipation was nerve-wracking would be an understatement. I mean, it was the stream that would help determine if Coyote was full of shit or just did something extremely stupid. The feeling was not erased by the music choice of Evangelion, but soon enough, 
Cass would commence the stream. Hello there, everyone. I think it's about time that we have a little chat before things get started. Just a, a few clarifications here and there. Because apparently, um, despite the fact that I've been fair and neutral with Coyote and a lot of people involved, uh, a lot of people decided that the best way of handling me over a few disagreements was to smear my name as usual. This is not surprising. It's funny how a lot of commentary individuals that talk about facts and evidence and exposing degenerates, first minute you start questioning one of their friends about some of the stuff that's been happening over a Kiwi Farms thread, all of a sudden that you're the demon of the community. Hmm. I wonder what that means. I, I wonder why. Yeah, I should probably talk about that part first, shouldn't I? Those who watched the stream can attest to Cass's vibe during it being best summed up as fuck commentators. There are multiple moments in the stream where he just unabashedly states this, as well as even referring to me by name at one point. I'll just take time to explain how I got involved in all this before we dive into the portions pertaining to Coyote. It should be noted that before the stream occurred, Cass had received quite a bit of flack just for stating that he planned to look into Coyote's track record, the most notable example of it being Coyote's boyfriend, Dia, saying that he would have Cass's Discord server shut down for racism before leaving. This occurred while his server was talking about Coyote's Kiwi Farms threat. Unfortunately, I too would call on the ire of his community. As me and members of my server were talking about Coyote's thread and Cass's upcoming stream covering it, I would make the mistake of poorly wording my criticisms of Cass, forgetting that gossip is a pretty prominent part of the internet. When discussing the fallout, at one point I would say, in all fairness, all parties involved are migraine inducing in their own right. Pretty much cements why I'm so hellbent on not dealing with the theatrics of community shit like this. I see no point in LARPing as some big bad mafia or degen hunter. Just share the damn information you got. I'm not going to speak for the members of my server as they can do that for themselves. It is their opinions after all. But what I was trying to say here is that I wasn't a fan of the way Coyote and Cass present information in their content. Coyote had a tendency to go on prolonged taunting tangents same towards the person he was covering, and Cass had his implementation of Bloodsports. While they both share the information they set out to share, that info is usually sandwiched in between larger moments of either snarkiness or spurgouts. That may be entertaining to watch, but will rarely add anything significant to the conversation, rather than something to point and make fun of. Your opinion could be different from mine regarding their presentation, and that's perfectly fine. But that's just my criticism of their presentation styles. The only issue is that this is the first time I properly worded it as such. Well, that and I said it while Cass was getting a bunch of similar hate his way over the decision to cover Coyote's thread. This resulted in him posting an announcement on his server, using these screenshots from my public Discord chat as an example of people talking shit about his community. He believed that my critique was aimed at the fact his content was on the edgy side of things, as well as the noir aesthetic that he uses for his content. Even misspelling milk toast in the middle of calling me a pretentious milk toast boogie 2988 furry wannabe because of this. He also wonders if I think the same of the Senate Discord server as they engage in similar antics as Cass. Although he tries to imply that I think it's fine because it was Coyote and Lyo doing that rather than him, I actually do have the same criticism for the Senate. It's not the aesthetic, it's not even being edgy for the sake of being edgy. Bloodsports just isn't my cup of tea altogether. I only engage with the content if it's absolutely required such as using it to source information like I did in my videos on Tercalo and deplatforming. That's kinda why it confuses me as to why he felt the need to make an announcement over this. I mean, the only people really saying anything negatively referring to Cass was me, a moderator of mine, and another member who's also a part of his community. I mean, this screenshot he used here isn't even aimed at him or his community. They're referring to Coyote's thread and Dia's comment about taking Cass's server down. Whoever handed him that one took it out of context here. But at least he ended the announcement with something I can fully agree on. That just as I can criticize his community and content presentation, he can do the same about mine. He even attached a little video at the end of it all. Oh, Gage, stop. You're gonna make your run- No, Gage, stop. Stop tormenting the rabbit. Fat bitch. No. Now, another thing that pulled me into the discussion was a screenshot of Sappho's Discord account. Showing Coyote, Daya, and me all having it in our friends list. While this was rather skimmed over in the stream as it didn't pertain to Coyote, but 
a rumor we'll talk about later. Naturally, this would bring people to start questioning why I was even there. And the explanation is a pretty simple one. Around the time of Cass's Zircalo interview, I was still a member of a server. During that stream, Sappho would join the call for reasons I don't really understand, say some things regarding Zircalo, and at one point, Cass would then tell Sappho that she should have offed herself, as this stream dates after she didn't go through with her suicide attempt. Sometime after this, I would receive a friend request from the account. Accepting it out of curiosity of what she'd say, Sappho would go on to talk about how they plan to change for real this time, to which I'd give dry okays and that's good to hears. As at this point, we were in late November of 2022, and quite a lot had happened in the year between the videos I made about Sappho and that conversation in November. A lot involving the endangerment of children, which left my faith in that change thinner than a sheet. The only issue here is that this recollection is based on memory. So you remember that dark place I said I was in? Yeah, the peak of that happened a few days before that stream when I deleted my Discord server without a word of warning. At that time, I was a mental wreck riddled with FOMO, jealousy, and imposter syndrome as far as the eye could see. It wasn't until a few weeks afterwards that I decided to take steps towards minimizing those feelings. One of the arguably worst ones I took being where I closed every DM I had to avoid seeing the friends and people I wronged with that impulsive decision of mine. You would think seeing your old friend group do a destiny rate without you wouldn't lead to some sort of depressive episode when you know why things are the way they are. Yeah, you would think someone couldn't be that pathetic, but enough beating up past me back on topic. In doing so, I never did reopen those DMs with Sappho. And with that account deleted, apparently there's no ways for me to retrace those DMs for evidence. I was given the account's user ID so I could search for the account that way and nothing came up. I was told to try searching deleted user, but her account didn't come up. Only someone faking being a deleted user and someone asking for the artist of my stills. So now I'm in a situation I usually try my damnedest to avoid, making a claim without evidence to back it up. So just like whenever I share a claim that has faulty or no evidence behind it, feel free to take what I've said here with a grain of salt. Also, one last thing that got me a mention during this stream was the idea of a possible poly relationship. I, 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 that reminds me, I do have another question. Um... And this is going to seem random at first, but I promise it's relevant. Coyote, was there ever a time that you were discussing a poly relationship with uh, other people, namely Benji, for example? I mean, I don't, to the best of my awareness, no. I don't, I'm not interested in poly relationships. I can barely handle one fucking relationship, let alone one with multiple people. Okay, well, there are rumors, and I'll admit that's all they are to my knowledge, but there are rumors that you were... Um, coaxing Benji Legovert into a poly relationship with you and Daya, and it just so happens that, I mean, if you look at the OP on Kiwi Farms, there's a screenshot um, of Sefa's Bastet account. Um, you, Daya, and Legovert just so happen to have Sefo added at that time. Yeah, I actually don't know why uh, Legovert had Sefo added. That was weird, but I didn't say anything to uh, Legovert. But that said, the only reason i could see that people would even think that is because of the artwork but that's i don't know that's there's no actual desire for a poly relationship there yeah i'll post a screenshot in this i'm not going to say anything about that because there's there's nothing to that um so I'm i mean i i do i do know that you know dia and Lagovert were on sappho's friends list at a point uh i don't know why that's <laughs> that's a question you would need to ask either of them um but no, I have no desire for any kind of poly relationship with anybody. Yeah. Yeah, this just kind of came out of left field for me. Apparently it was a rumor that got started. Like, I don't know if it was the friends list thing that started this or the art that Daya would gift me and Coyote, but I still can't really comprehend how this was the conclusion that someone came up with. I, I thought they would have accused me of being involved in the gay op, but I guess that wasn't the case. Like, I, I, I don't know, man. It, it threw me off hard hearing it in real time. L let's, let's just get back to the rest of the stream. Now given this was a nearly 3 hour stream, it would be absolutely idiotic to go through the entirety of it in this video. This is why I recommend you watch it yourself if you can spare the time. While I do have my criticisms of Cass's methods, my coverage of this stream can only do so much justice for it. Which is why I'll be running through the more important parts as it pertains to Coyote. 
So, Cass opens by explaining his qualms with how Coyote handled himself after being told rescheduling the stream wasn't an option. He and Coyote had planned out what the optics of the interview would be three days before this stream. But the day of, Coyote had to cancel his appearance due to family planning to visit him. He asked if it was possible to move the stream to the next day, to which Cass declined, as it would then clash with the schedules of others involved in the stream. Because rescheduling wasn't possible, Coyote said he would make a video explaining his side of the situation, as well as hand Cass a doc explaining his side of the op before announcing his situation on Twitter, making it clear that Cass had declined a rescheduling. So, uh, I was making it pretty clear I can't stop the stream. I just can't. There is a lot of people involved in this drama, and it's hard as fuck to get everyone to agree on a specific date to go on a show. A lot of people involved have lives outside of social media, Yodi, and I know you don't have one because you don't have a job and you don't go to education like I do. On top of this, Cass also went on to explain why he had a problem with Coyote deciding to make a video instead of joining him on the live stream. So what happened was, when I said fine, he decided to say that he was going to make a video instead of joining the live stream. Now I need to bring this up. He- <laughs> too. Now, ex real quick. So when you go to a live stream, you have to remember that the whole point of having a conversation on a live stream is so that you, the audience, and the people involved get to talk to each other one-on-one without scripts. If you're going to do streams, that's the point. That's the reason I do these interviews and debates. Because any fucking retard can sit there on a live- on a fucking video, scripting whatever they could say and whatever he wants. But it wasn't until later in the stream where things began to go downhill for Coyote. As just minutes before the stream, a Kiwi Farms member, who would then be found out to be Sappho, would share a Telegram chat that gave a glimpse into the extent of flirting going on between Coyote and Sappho, both by text and by voice message. So Sappho has apparently for some time engaged in sexual conversations with Coyote Lovely. God, Coyote is cute when he's flustered. He wants Mommy Valerie's cock. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. God. Oh, Daya. Oh yeah, Daya, the same person who threatened to take down my Discord server because my community started talking about the Coyote Lovely thread. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this, you fucking spurgs. Some of you in the chat who've been defending Yodi, this is what you defended. Look at this. Operation Val uh, Valerie. For any Kiwi farmers that see this, yes, Coyote had a crush on Sappho and interacted lewdly on multiple occasions. Kyle also insisted on being treated as a boy and for Sappho to be a mommy, unquote, and asked for intimate levels of <laughs> hypnosis multiple times. Coyote was into it, and after being outed, I presume he lied to his friends, and that lie kept getting bigger until he had to shut it down and defa those interactions. There is no operation, and you know the truth about him and other de degenerate, unquote unquote, pedo hunters like Lyle Convoy with retarded autistic hangouts like the Senate. There you go, little one. You can relax and sit down into my lap. Just get nice and comfortable. Resting up against my chest fluffies. I'll hold you and kiss you and play with your hair. And when you're all nice and relaxed and comfortable against me, I'll have my way with you. <laughs> Remember when I said I wanted to put faith in a friend despite what it was they did? Yeah, it gets a lot harder to say that with confidence when you're shown the specifics of what they had done. Especially when the chaser to that shot is a screenshot of Coyote in a telegram chat littered with a number of anonymous dogfuckers. One of the screenshots shown being a large ways away from his usual stance of all dogfuckers and pedos should be taken out back. Here, Coyote seems to take a more sympathetic take to the issues, saying that he knows for a fact there's no cure for the illnesses, and that if someone with these illnesses was serious about wanting to be safe around others, that they would be doing their best to keep it contained and as far away from the public as possible. Now, there isn't anything inherently wrong with this take. I do kind of share that belief myself, given that in my past videos I've stated that my stance on dogfuckers has kind of diminished from burn them all at the stake to 
ostracize and publicly shame anyone who thinks wanting to fuck Fido is something to be prideful about. Take isn't the issue here. Is the fact that he's sharing this take in a telegram chat full of people who gathered there due to a shared arousal of animals. And even then, there's still the question of why he was even there to begin with. I made a bit of a mistake. I thought someone was in Kaz's. Got two people mixed up. Regardless, I was likely saw Kaz other interactions between him and Nerf. Oh, yeah, they were talking about this in a certain server. I can't remember which, but I'm not going to make a big deal about it. Uh, oh, yeah. This is Coyote statements. Oh, yeah. That actually was an easy explanation. Zerpetto wound up feeding me a line of bullshit about, oh, if you find Zuzeta's chats, you can send these guys. So I did. I, uh, like, I was genuinely mistaken on the end to make sure, but he's not dumb or anything else doing so. And what, <laughs> this was when we were roommates, so I trusted them at their word that that it was good okay okay hold on hold on hold on making this very clear uh yodi you are not a fed you are not allowed to go around in host chats full of pedophiles and dog fuckers and going going out of your way to put this shit on the put this shit on display that's called a honeypot that's illegal for a normal person you're not a fed. <laughs> like, you're not a fed. And as things continue to look worse for Coyote, we would then have a user by the handle of Fursky Doodle detail her experience with Coyote concerning his filing of a police report. According to Fursky, Coyote had joined AVC where Fursky was in the middle of bawling her eyes out due to death threats she received from an abuser of hers through Second Life. He would help Fursky out by filing a police report concerning the incident. But later down the line, the existence of the police report will be called into question, as some members of Cass's server engaged with law enforcement would try to search for it and came back empty-handed. Although Coyote would go on to later adamantly insist that he did in fact file the report, this testimony was to accent the point that Coyote didn't have anything to prove he submitted the report, other than his word, the word of Archive the Wolf who vouched for Coyote filing a report the same way in the past, and screenshots showing that he talked to Fursky about submitting it. But in the case of Fursky's situation, there were no screenshots of confirmation, no public reports, nothing other than simply saying that he did in the past, so obviously he had done it this time. And although Coyote didn't appear on the stream just yet, he did discuss the topic of Fursky with Cass when they were organizing the initial interview. I just want to say this real quick. I want to read the screenshot because he said this kind of in the middle of, of us discussing the stream and how it was going to go. So let me just read this for you, the chat, the audience, for everybody involved real quick. Um, because this is response after knowing full well that Frisky was going to join the stream because I did mention that at some point. Um, let me uh, read this to the audience real quick. I should mention very quickly, I don't intend to discuss the Frisky stuff at length for a handful of reasons, but ultimately the primarily one is, is that the situation had no relevance in my opinion. I have no obligations to assist everybody, so at the end of the day, no matter what anyone chooses to believe about the situation, whether in my side of the story or anyone else's, the fact is I do not possess any obligation to do anything about this negates just by any point that could be made. It sounds like a fucking word salad, but here we go. The worst you can do is call me a dick regarding the whole situation, and I don't think there's much else that could be said. I'm just going to say this now because it will make a lot more sense later, but I fully believe that Yote's handling of Fursky's situation is what led to this reputation being put 60 feet under. With the Sappho situation, I could see the slim chance in which he'd get ragged on for his stupidity for a while, but he would find a way to redeem himself for it later down the line. With his response concerning Fursky, even if a report was filed or not, this type of response isn't exactly okay. This is probably going to sound stupid the way I word this, but I'll give it a try anyway. If you don't have an obligation to help a victim, why offer to help the victim? Let me paint an example here. Say some young kid came up to you and asked you for help finding their lost bionicle figure or something. You agree to help them out, and then you just go home. Because you don't have an obligation to help them find it. This wastes the time of everyone involved. I understand wanting to do your part in helping the victim, and I do understand how no one wants to feel as if they pushed away someone in need, but if you're going to be in a situation where you can't follow through or helping them just isn't an obligation for you, it would probably be the better option to just say that or point them in the direction of someone who can, lest you end up in a situation similar to Coyote here, 
who would actually find the time to make an appearance on the stream as it neared the hour mark. However, between Coyote playing League hours before the stream, having family visit him and just having finished dinner, to say he wasn't fully prepared for the stream and probably would have been better off if he just didn't go on. L let's just get into it. Okay, hello there. Welcome to the show, Coyote Lovely. I'm here. You done playing League, Kyle? <laughs> I've been done playing League. I was having dinner with my family, which also ended. Don't believe you, man. They're probably on it right now. It's amazing. I don't give a shit. Anyway. What'd you have for dinner? You do, you're not giving a shit. You love eating it. Okay, anyway. We had chili for dinner, Cedric. Thanks for asking. It was at this point where we would actually start to get some elaboration concerning the Sappho Gea. It began when Pizza asked why Coyote deleted his side of DMs between him and Sappho. Why did you nuke your uh, DMs with Sappho? Because you and Cedric, like the fucking brainlets you are, blew the op. Ow. That, that's bullshit. Uh, I want to call you out on that post, one. I don't care. I posted the fucking logs. Hey, hey, yo. How yeah. come Alex was in the Sappho thread talking about the op openly before Cedric and Pizza went on it? She was openly saying that she was talking with Sappho for days, not even a week before that happened. So why are you throwing the blame on those two? Because fucking Alex didn't post anything publicly about the ops specifically, they did. and just because... They where? were. They were. Where? They were. On the Sappho thread. On the fucking keyword. Show me the fucking link, and I will... I will actually believe you if you show me the link. That's one thing nobody's fucking shown me. Uh-huh. There actually are occasions in the thread where Alex or... Gale was open with the fact that they were talking to Sappho nearly daily. The earliest post I came across was almost two weeks before the op was considered blown by Coyote, and they were very open when talking about their view on at least wanting to give Sappho a chance to change for the better, while still maintaining a scoop to skepticism. However, Coyote considered the op ruined on January 22nd, as he was no longer able to get in contact with Pizza due to being blocked. This would prompt Kaz to respond with the fact that Sappho was swatted on December 30th. Although, he argues that this would have blown the op itself because police would be putting their resources towards finding out who was responsible. Personally, I don't think it would have guaranteed that the op itself failed. Sure, it is argued in stream that the swatting would make it much more difficult to get a warrant against Sappho, but how would a warrant against Sappho even be created based on this gay op? And even then, there's still the big glaring issue that no one can seem to pinpoint when the op was actually screwed over. This just leaves me questioning what benefit there was to flirting with her for info at all. Okay, with that being said, the what, what, what exactly does it mean that the op was blown? Because the only thing that I'm gathering that you, of use, according to you, is that you were able to confirm Sappho's address, which was already on the farms, and I mean, it wouldn't have taken a large amount of detective work to confirm that it was indeed her address. Uh, you, you didn't need to flirt with her to get that information. I mean, honestly, I don't know what I could have confirmed. That's the whole reason that I did it. I don't know what I could have gotten, but I thought I could have gotten something. That's the issue with the op. It seems the only part of it everyone can agree on is that it was a stupid idea. It was formed on the basis of, well, let's try this shit out and see what we end up with. It was playing pressure luck with a whammy on every space but one. If there was a distinct goal to this gay op, this wouldn't even be a point needed to discuss as everyone would be on the same page as to what ruined the op. That's why this entire thing is just one giant mess with its details sprawled everywhere. There was no clearly defined goal to this. Hardly anything about the op was defined until Coyote thought it was close to being blown. But sure, let's talk about the date it was blown. Let's say it was guaranteed that the swatting didn't ruin the op. Let's say Alex wasn't openly talking about their connection to Sappho publicly. What could Coyote have gotten in those 23 days that he couldn't have already had in those past two months? Regardless, the discussion gets hung up on the swatting, and Coyote continues to dig himself deeper in the public eye with his aggressive approach to the panel. Let's see. I, I, would, I would like to answer your your question, Yodi, on how it would have ruined the investigation. Dude, look, I'm going to say this publicly. I have been involved with law enforcement my okay, entire Finnegan, I'm fucking... stop right there. I don't give a shit. Cass, why don't you show me what you got? All right. Oh, so this oh, is. Oh, you don't care? Oh, uh, dude, you can't swat somebody and expect to have a fucking war pop out of I your didn't ass. swat anybody, so why don't you fucking kill yourself? It doesn't matter if it's if you swatted them or wow, not. That's okay, not the point. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. You, you, it doesn't matter. All right, everyone, shut, shut the, the fuck up, you uptight hole. 
This is when Coyote's disheveled state of defense would bite him in the ass. Remember when I said Fursky's situation was the most damning thing here for Coyote? Yeah, it gets worse, but we're not there yet. Now, the one thing I can say about this dream is that Pizza at least played a part in keeping the discussion civil, as the majority of his input consisted of pointing out just how horribly thought out the op was. Something that Coyote also acknowledges multiple times in the stream, but that acknowledgement kind of falls flat on its face when it leads to Pizza proving how Coyote had ample time to archive information before deleting it. Okay, now here's another quote. You said, I should have exported them first, that was a mistake not doing that, but I, I didn't know how much time that I had because Sappho has weird fucking hours, so I just did the safest thing I fucking could at the time. Now here's my response, this is where, where it's obviously a lie. The decision to nuke your chats was not an impromptu one. You weren't worried about how much time you had according to the screenshots of the DMs between you and Rodeo. According to the screenshots, you became aware that the op was compromised at 1952 hours. You then began conversing with Rodeo about why certain things had possibly occurred until 2016 hours, when you stated, I'm probably going to end up redact.deving my chats with Sappho soon. This implies that you are not in a hurry. The conversation continues. And at 20, 25 hours, you state, I'm currently redact.deving my chat with Sappho. In other words, it took you 33 minutes to make the decision to nuke your chats after finding out that the op was compromised. It takes a few seconds to export a chat. On Discord, it takes longer to redact.dev a chat than it does to export it, so you're a fucking liar, dude. You sat there and had to think about it. This is the evidence. This is evidence. This is factual evidence. You're a fucking liar. Which, I won't lie, I did find a bit of humor in this portion. Mostly because of how Cass earlier scolded Coyote about life not being like a James Bond film. But then you cut to this, a scene literally rehashed out of Bojack Horseman. References aside, the Sappho gay op wouldn't be the worst of it. Because as horribly thought out, as horribly idiotic as it was, it wouldn't harm his reputation worse than this. I have, I have one more and then we'll get back to like the op shit if you guys want to continue running around and serving chasing the kiwis um why the fuck did you say what you fucking said to kaz where you didn't want to go at length about the first key report shit like i really want to know because i really burned my fucking buns on multiple because at the end of the day and this might sound cold i don't have an obligation to file a report i'm just some asshole on the internet i'm not a cop D i'm not a lawyer i i don't have an obligation and I mean, you made several promises and DMs to Fursky. The screenshot have the, I don't know if they've been leaked on the Kiwi Farms or if they haven't, if they you, will. Pizza, what if you give your on, word? Hold on a minute, Pizza. I did file a report. I'm not going to say that I didn't, but at the same time, the reason I don't consider it worth discussing is because at the end of the day, no matter what, no matter what I say, I don't have an obligation. It's not my. Well, fucking what if what if you what if you I mean, give your word? I will say but that you if keep I'm, saying yeah. that you're doing this for the victim and that you care about the victims, but oh fuck the I victim! If I'm I'm not obligated when it's not convenient to me in my. Right I will oh, say yeah, it's not a big pedophile, so therefore I'm not obligated to file a police report or like give any comfort to the victim. It's not about the views, I swear. It's all about the victims. It's not about the money, Fursky. I'm doing this because I caught you crying in a VC. And I was like, it's okay, little girl. Like, don't worry about it. Here, have a police Are you report quite I'm done? I'm not going to file. Are you quite done? No, I'm not quite done because this okay. whole entire situation well, has me really pissed off. Okay. That's amazing. I don't care. Hold anyway, on. I do have the reason a, we, oh, we know. Sorry. So you really don't care about the victims. No, Fursky, I don't give a fuck about you. I think you're a fucking bitch. There you go. That's my answer. I don't, it's not, it has nothing to do with the victims. I don't give a fuck <laughs> about you specifically. Uh, she wow. was, no, wait, she was you, a vic, she was a victim of something, and you did jump in and say you were making these reports, and you intentionally And I did make a fucking, re and I did make a fucking report. That said, because of the situation as it has devolved, wow. I don't, it's not a matter of Fursky being a victim, I just don't like Fursky. So, Regard I just want to ask, I want to make this kind of clear, so, because you didn't like them, you didn't follow up with it, or, I mean, what, what are you trying to say here? No, I'm what I'm trying to say here yeah. right now is what I'm trying to say is that I don't like Fursky. She happens to be a victim, and I did file the report. That said, because I was in the middle of this brain dead op, which admittedly dumb fucking decision, I didn't fucking follow up because the way that I saw it is there were a lot of people still helping Fursky, but nobody helping the other victim. So I picked the other victim. Well, shit. Guess like uh, you know, not all victims are created equal, guys. 
Yeah, so, you're right. If somebody's still helping you and no one's helping the other person, I'm gonna fucking help the other person. Sorry, Fursky. At least you had a fucking safety net to fall back on. Well, like, me and you, before all this drama, you were trying to be really fucking buddy-buddy with me, like, fucking on the precinct and shit. You helped us with the Sappho shit. Like, shit, man. Like, oh, I thought we was friends. I, I, well, you I'm thought a... wrong, you Let me idiot. speak. Fuck. There is no defending this. There is no possible type of reasoning or justification that could make what Coyote did here okay. This is something Cord would fucking do. Something he has done on multiple occasions. At what point is it okay to call the person you said you would help, did help for some time, and essentially left for someone else to help, a bitch? At that point, I'm pretty sure apologizing would be the only option on the plate there. It doesn't matter if you like or don't like someone, at this point in time, they're a victim you offered to help, and regardless of your lack of obligation, there's no excuse for this little stunt here. But even after that happened, even after a member of Cass's server would do everything short of verbally sending Coyote to hell herself, the call would still continue, though now it seemed to shift more to the aforementioned fuck commentators area of things. Now my issue with you is that you continue to go on this ploy about how you thought the tactics were effective, I completely disagree with that, because you had nothing to show for it. And the most I got was people being antagonistic because they thought their lord and savior, Coyote Lovely, was being attacked, when in actuality it was community just being concerned. Uh, but apparently because, God forbid, some of that anger and frustration and edginess was directed towards people for it, and their, their constant need not to listen to what's been posted and what you've said, somehow meant that that was a problem in my community. I think that's bullshit. I think this is something that is systemic and wrong with you commentary fuckers, and I'm getting really tired of this antics, because I've yes, seen this Yes, I literally so fucking often. told every- Like, as a matter of fact, I went on somebody's fucking reply on Twitter publicly saying, don't blame Cass for this bullshit. Mm -hmm. I literally have said that. I have said that to people on fucking Discord, too. Like, I understand that you're mad about that, and you have a right to be, but I don't think you have a right to be mad at me specifically when I have literally been telling people that they don't have the right to be angry at you for this whole fucking cluster. I have already touched on the majority previously, but I assume this is also in reference to what I poorly said previously about finding their presentation migraine-inducing at times. Although I didn't say his community being vocal about this stuff is the problem I had with it. If that were it, I would have been talking about it in my own community. I at least made it pretty clear that the issue I have with this community is solely Discord server deep. Cass himself should be aware that my issue is solely with the fact that I don't feel comfortable being a member of a server due to how many slurs and stupid shit can be slung there on occasion. I mean, he did call it a skill issue on my part after all. Yes, the people in his community band together and get shit like this done like you've been seeing for the majority of this video, but like I said with his application of blood sports, I choose not to engage with it unless I absolutely have to, which is why I left the server months ago without saying a word. Because just like how I choose to handle my community, he chose how to handle his. And I can respect that even though I'm not very fond of the place. We're both adults here. And as adults, if we don't want to be somewhere, we can always just leave. Most of the time. But anyways, after that, they would get into a larger discussion of why the Sappho Op was a dumb fucking idea. Which I'm going to go past as I believe it's already been made clear that there was nothing of substance that could be gained from doing this in the first place. Then the poly relationship question happened, which still feels a little unreal, I'll be honest. But from there, it essentially became an ultimatum from Cass's Fox Mafia, Tulio, and the Senate. Cass intended for a line to be drawn in the sand when it comes to ops and behavior similar to what Coyote displayed here. In a nutshell, the message was, ditch Coyote or face the consequences. Also, something about the righteous indignation of God, I don't know, it got kinda edgy at that point. Either way, it would be dealt with by the Senate in a voice call that would be uploaded to Lyo's channel, linked in the description as I won't be touching on that part myself. Later in the stream, Coyote would at least try to get an apology out for what he said to Frisky, but at this point it pretty much fell on deaf ears. The point this portion would cement is that Coyote has far from carried himself well during his time undergoing this gay op. Cowboy Ferret, or Rodeo, would come on the stream at this time to detail just how little Coyote had told them about the op. So, 
back when like you told me that you were kind of delete everything i kind of offered to at least see okay well if you have any archives you can send them my way and then you told me that you were just going to delete everything like what what was the purpose of that like if i had at least some kind of like archive or at least some kind of evidence to show that like hey this is actually what was going on you know what i could have been your corner but you didn't and that's what fucking threw me off wait you did hold on yeah, that, me, it's I, all I, in the screenshots i, I understand i understand i'm checking the dms now i I fucking I don't I actually don't have a good answer for that. The best that I can guess is that I was not in a very solid headspace and I just fucking made a snap decision. That's the best I can guess. I don't know. I mean, like fuck. I don't know what else to tell you at that point. That's okay. I don't have much after this because here's the thing. I wasn't as involved in the op and I was probably for a good fucking reason. But still, it was really kind of weird. To just like pull me into this. It's like. It, to me, my issue is that there's a fucking lack of communication going on with this op because you say, okay, this is an op, but then you don't tell me anything, you don't say anything, and now it's like all this shit is coming out. It makes me wonder, like, how do I... Others, such as Lyo, are able to attest being put into similar situations, as can I, but in my case, that's more so due to my own negligence. He did vaguely bring it up to me in some capacity a few days after he considered the op to be blown. If I remember correctly, he posted a gif of Miles Edgeworth to which I responded with a meme, unaware of what it was actually referring to. Unfortunately for me, I didn't go to check the thread or even inquire further on what he was referring to, as I was busy getting my own personal life in order and just assumed I'd hear about it later on Twitter. Yeah, I sure heard about it later, but the end of this stream would be where Coyote announced that he would be done making content in the realm of exposing or mocking animal and child abusers. Uh, okay, well, let me put this in perspective, yo, because you want to apologize, you want to be able to say all this shit. Okay, I get you. I'm not trying to be too disparaging against that. Problem is, we're literally going past three times uh, <clears throat> in terms of the, the fuckery. So at that point, it's like, the apologies sound nice, but it's kind of hopeless and pointless, I will admit. Yeah, and that's why I'm probably not going to be making this kind of content anymore going forward. Yes, I've said this to you a couple times, and you were pretty hesitant on just accepting the answer, so re uh, I'll reiterate again. I think if you want to salvage this for anyone involved, just quit. I'm not quitting YouTube, but I'm not making this content, but... Mm. um. It is one of those things, and then I did agree with you when we when we called the other night that yeah, I'm, I should quit making this content. You know, that was something that I think a, a point that we both agreed upon. And honestly, I think this will be the best move, not just for him, but for the community surrounding this type of content, whether it be commentary, predator hunters, or fandom as a whole. In some senses, keeping people responsible for their actions should be encouraged, regardless of how close you may be to them. As petty as I feel Cass was regarding the jabs he made towards commentators and me specifically, he was kind of justified in this, at least on my end of the pool. Here, for here on out, for here on out, we're gonna be a little edgy, as in, as in Tenny, you know? Uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna be a little edgy, got a problem, take your sensitive asses to lag over, I do not care. I also guess recycling someone else's joke was kind of fitting too. I will admit, I coped pretty fucking hard during this whole thing. Hoping that Coyote was just having a moment of belligerent stupidity. That him pulling this gay up was something he could just take as a fuck up and learn not to do shit like this in the future. You know, like what I did after my gay up years ago. Instead, I got met with a pattern that, at best, shows Coyote as a poor judge of people's character, and at worst, shows that he has constantly associated with the very people he put on stages to have tomatoes thrown at them. Regardless, Coyote has joined them on that very stage. If not for the beratement of a victim he promised to help, then for his attempt to get information by betting a homewrecker, both in the metaphorical and uh, threatened literal sense. But the thing is, I don't exactly have a proper way to end this off here, as the stream pretty much goes back to the Bloodsports tradition of letting server members in to voice their opinions on what just happened. I hope he listens to this, because uh, I got a few questions. For, for for my little bitch, my li my bitch. By the way, it, it is canon now. Coyote Lovely is my bitch. I own him. Okay, I own him. So there isn't really much of note for me to cover here. I guess I'll just follow suit and give my own thoughts on this whole ordeal. So this entire situation was a goddamn dumpster fire. 
but unfortunately it was one that I found myself emotionally invested in. It was a dumpster fire that left me feeling completely betrayed and disappointed. Not just because Coyote was someone I trusted as a friend, but he was one of the people who inspired me to give YouTube a try. He's one of the people who inspired my earlier content before it slowly became more of its own thing. He reached a hand out to help me at one of my lowest emotional points, and I'm grateful for that. Which is why having several people come to me to essentially pull in I told you so was about as pleasant as injecting lemon juice directly into my veins. But even with all of that, I can't continue to stand by and defend him after everything I learned and everything I saw that day. And if I'm feeling disappointed, as someone who was a friend of his for just around two years, I can only imagine how much worse that feeling must be for the victims he promised to help and were let down due to his negligent and immoral actions he decided to do. Seeing him deteriorate and self-destruct all in the span of a day was pretty fucking surreal. But the thing that went through my head during this whole thing is when Dragoneer said it was hard for him to remove Rowley from Fur Affinity when he learned he was soliciting nudes from miners there. I know that sounds like a wild fucking comparison, but that was a situation where I criticized Dragoneer for even hesitating to remove Growly just because he considered that pedo a friend of his. Yet, here I am hesitating to do something similar, even now after the livestream. I've denounced Coyote on Twitter for this, I've removed him and Dia from my Discord server staff because of it, and suggested they fully leave it altogether to mixed results. I've distanced myself from Coyote because everything I've witnessed that day was indefensible. It was rash, it was fucking moronic, there was no thought behind it at all, and I would be betraying my own morals if I even considered defending his actions further than I already have. I don't plan to associate with him, nor do I plan on giving him the time of day anytime soon. And yet, a part of me still finds cutting him off entirely that much more difficult. Part of me is desperately hoping that he'll reflect on this, like all of this, Blamir, Zircalo, Sappho, all of this, and just learn to do better. Just get his shit together. Uh, okay, poor choice of wording, but you, you get what I mean. He said he plans to drop off the internet for a while and get himself sorted out along with leaving the realm of predator hunting content altogether. Which are great first steps, but until then, until there's an actual display, an actual sign that he's changed for the better, he's just someone that I used to associate with now. What's happened has happened, and the only thing that matters is what happens next. Life goes on after all. That's what I got told after my constant self-destructing caused one fuck up after another, and I can say it does help you start to open your eyes. Sometimes, you just need to be made aware that there's a point in which people aren't going to be accepting of your fuck-ups anymore. That you need to be better, or else you'll just continue fucking yourself over and harming those around you. A bit of a self-report there on my own mental crisis, but that was all to say that I'm hoping he manages to straighten his shit out. And if not, well, what happens happens. That's all there is to it. Stay safe out there. Funding for this program was made possible by...